Happy Cinco de Mayo! Today, I am making two cocktails because we need to celebrate. Just to clear something up first, this is not Mexican Independence Day. Cinco de Mayo is actually a day to commemorate the Battle of Puebla when the Mexican army defeated the, uh, the French. We are celebrating Cinco de Mayo with these amazing cocktails. For those times where you can't decide between sweet and spicy, we're making a spicy mango margarita. And for those times when you can't decide whether you want a paloma or a mimosa, we're making a paloma mimosa today on Sweet Heat. So the first cocktail that we are going to make is a spicy mango margarita. I really love this cocktail because, well, I mean, obviously it's a play off of, of a classic and my little inclusion is a little bit of spicy syrup. So I'm using some really, really beautiful red Guajillo chili peppers. I love making flavored syrups. So we are going to make a simple syrup uh, with the Guajillo and a little bit of sugar and water. And that's going to be one of the flavor bases. And we're going to pair that with my favorite fruit of all time mangoes to make something spicy, citrusy, and delicious. These are chili guajillos. They are really common throughout Mexico and used in every state in Mexican cuisine. They're pretty common and easy to find in the U.S., but if you can't find guajillos, you can use New Mexican reds or California reds. If you want to use something that maybe you already have, anchos would be a really good substitute as well, pasillas. Basically, you want to use a long dried chili. And now that they are seeded, I'm just going to throw them in the pot. To that, I'm going to add half a cup of water and half a cup of sugar and we will bring this to a boil. I love making these flavored syrups and you don't have to use chilies, you can actually use fruit. I've made strawberry, pineapple, peach syrups. You basically just cut up your fruit. You can do it with herbs, you can do it with fresh chilies. I've made a jalapeno syrup as well. Um, basically, you're just making a simple syrup and then adding something to it and that thing can be fresh, it can be dried, it can be a spice or it can be an herb. And if you like this syrup, make sure you hit like and subscribe and you will be notified as soon as there's another Sweet Heat episode. All right, so I'm going to remove the wahios from the syrup, but I'm not throwing them away because they've been boiling in this syrup. They're gonna be really, really sweet and a little bit spicy. And if I dry them out, they'll make great garnishes for the cocktails. I'm gonna put this in to a very low oven for a couple of hours until I get really nice candied and crispy. So I'm gonna let this cool down, throw it in the fridge, get it really nice and cold for about an hour, and then we will make that drink. The first thing that we're gonna do is make some lime juice, because obviously what would a margarita be without lime juice? Well, it wouldn't be a margarita. <laughs> All right, so I've got my lime squeezer. I'm using key limes, which I adore, and they're uh, much more common here than Persian limes are in the U.S. Um, I think that they are a little bit more um, acidic than the Persian limes. Uh, they also, the, the zest and the oils in the zest, I believe have a lot more floral notes, which I really, really like. And I'm using three little key limes and that is giving me an ounce of juice, which is great. Now I am going to cut a lime wedge which I will use to rim the glass. You can also uh, just dip your, the rim of your glass in water, but I feel like you know, you're gonna get a little bit of those essential oils from the zest if you just kind of dig both the pulp and the zest around the edge. And then I'm just gonna go around and kind of push the salt into the rim of the glass, both the inside and the outside, so there's plenty of salty goodness. That salt is gonna cut through the sweetness of the margarita and just balance everything out. It's time to put this together. Okay, so I'm gonna throw some ice into my shaker. And now I'm going to add the lime juice, the mango nectar, and a half an ounce of chilled wahio syrup and two ounces of tequila. All right, Josh, may I have a really nice festive shaking music, please? Mm -hmm. 
All right, you want to shake this for at least 20 seconds. That is the optimal time to both cool your cocktail and also dilute the concentration. If you don't want to count for 20 seconds, it's when your hand starts to burn because it's so cold. And that's when you know it's done. I'm going to put some ice in our glass. And using a Hawthorne strainer, pour this in. All right, so now it's time to garnish, but I have to stop for a second and talk about these really beautiful dehydrated citrus wheels. I am so proud of these. You've probably seen these in your favorite bar and those fancy cocktails, and they're really super simple to make. All you have to do is slice any citrus you want really, really thin, put it on a rack inside of a sheet tray and leave it in the sun for a couple of days or put it in your oven on the very lowest setting, let it go for maybe four or five hours, just check on it until it's completely dry and crispy and you'll, if you thump it, it makes a little sound. It's perfect for your cocktails. They last for months in an airtight container. All right, I'm putting them in along with my really beautiful candied guajillo. And this drink is ready for a taste. Salud. Mm. It's sweet, it's salty, it's citrusy. It's a little tiny bit spicy. It's everything that I want in a cocktail on a warm tropical night. And especially if I'm celebrating Cinco de Mayo. So for cocktail number two, it's another mashup of my favorite things that I couldn't decide. But it is, of course, sweet and spicy, obviously. It combines my favorite things, palomas or grapefruit flavored cocktails. Palomas are, are pretty famous here in Mexico. And depending on where you are in the country, you probably had it with either squirt or jaritos. It is a cocktail made with grapefruit soda, typically, and tequila. What I'm gonna be using today instead of grapefruit soda is actual grapefruit. And then mimosas, we all know those. Little fruit juice and a top, a splash of something sparkly. In this case, I'm gonna be using Prosecco. The first thing we're gonna do is make yet another flavored syrup, this one with grapefruit zest. So I'm gonna take the peel off of this with a vegetable peeler. This is actually a technique to remove the zest from any citrus without any of the white bitter pith. And so what you do is you take a Y peeler and you just in a sawing motion moving back and forth, just slowly move down your citrus and then you can see there's absolutely no trace of any white pith at all. And all of this zest now goes into our shaker. And to the shaker, I'm going to add a quarter cup of sugar. Okay, so this step, we are going to use a muddler. It's basically just a masher. It has, uh, this one has a rubber end with some little teeth to help you squash and extract the flavor out of whatever it is you're muddling. You can muddle citrus. I've muddled berries. You can muddle herbs. Basically, you're just kind of pounding everything in like a mortar and pestle and mixing it into the sugar down below. If you don't have one of these, don't worry about it. You can actually just use uh, the back of a wooden spoon. That works totally fine. I want to basically extract all of the essential oils out of the pith. So now, and I will show you, the sugar almost looks like it's starting to dissolve and it looks like the peel is just completely coated in sugar. Well, that's the sweet, and now for a little heat. So actually, this is gonna be much more than a little heat. I am using habanero because I love habanero. I think they're actually very, very fruity. Obviously, they're like super spicy. I am going to remove the stem, and if you're really averse to heat, obviously you can, you can leave this out altogether. Uh, you can take the seeds out or you can leave them in. Um, I think I'm gonna take a little bit out because this is a very, large habanero. All right, then I'm just going to drop it in the shaker. And then I'm just gonna muddle this. I'm gonna be careful because it will be very aggressive if I muddle too much. I just want to break it up ever so slightly, get out some of that delicious flavor. And the heat from the habanero is actually going to kind of cut through and complement the sting of the tequila, which I also really, really like. Now to this, I'm going to add a quarter cup of water. Now, 
I am going to shake this for about 20 seconds. There's no ice in here, so I'm not trying to dilute anything. I'm not trying to get anything cold. All I'm trying to do is finish the job of dissolving all the sugar, bringing all those flavors together, and we'll have a flavored syrup. So this is a great recipe to make ahead. Um, all you have to do is strain this, put it in a container, store it in the fridge. It'll last literally for months, or you can even freeze it. You can use it to flavor non-alcoholic drinks, like you can make a limeade, you can make a citrus aid with it. Super versatile, lasts forever. All right, so I'm gonna juice these grapefruits. And both of these cocktails use tequila, which I really, really love a lot, but I also love mezcal. And I wanna tell you a little bit about both so you can decide which you would like to use. So actually, tequila is a type of mezcal. Both are made from the center part or the piña of the agave plant. In tequila, the agave is roasted, much like you would roast vegetables. Um, and so there's not a lot of smoky notes. Whereas mezcal, they're cooked in pits that are dug out, filled with wood, set on fire. And so you pick up a lot of the smoky notes. If you go to a liquor store, a lot of the liquor stores that carry good tequilas will allow you to try them and figure out what kind and style of tequilas and mezcalas that you like. Every great cocktail needs an amazing garnish. So I am going to show you how to not only make this particular garnish, which is actually pretty easy, but also cut the perfect citrus slices for your cocktails. You're gonna make two cuts to get this wedge. The first one is gonna go straight down into the citrus almost getting to the halfway mark, but not quite. The second, we're gonna go at about a 20 degree angle. It'll cut through all the membranes, so you'll have really beautiful exposed pulp. And now I'm just going to dip this in tajin, which is a chili salt mixture that's very common in Mexico. It's just gonna give us some really nice extra flavor, a little hit of salt a little more citrus and a little bit more spice. So I have my quarter cup of freshly squeezed ruby red grapefruit juice with some added pulp, one ounce of tequila, and I have half an ounce of my sweet and spicy grapefruit habanero syrup. And I'm just going to give this a little stirry stir. It's my favorite time. Time to pop the cork. Feliz Cinco de Mayo! All right, garnish. It is so beautiful. Ah. It's tasting time. I have to say, this is definitely on brand for the color palette. We've got orange, we've got pink. It's the perfect cocktail for my little bar area. I'm super excited to take a taste. Mm. This is the perfect Cinco de Mayo cocktail, or really, honestly, anytime. It would be a great brunch drink as well. And as always, if you like me, if you like this recipe, if you like this show, make sure you hit like and subscribe, and you will be notified as soon as there's another Sweet Heat episode. And you can find all these recipes at food52.com. Feliz Cinco de Mayo.